Welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming out on such an inclement afternoon. Um, it's lovely to see you all. I'm especially pleased that the people who threatened to disrupt our meeting seem to have changed their mind, maybe deterred by the weather, who knows. Um, we're here today to, obviously, I think you're all here to listen to the fabulous John Waters, architect of beautiful prose. Looking forward to hearing John. He's going to talk about some issues that are to the core of concerns in the Irish Freedom Party, and a lot of it is media manipulation, media bias, the fact that we need to now look somewhere else for our accurate and truthful information, whether it's about culture, politics, social policy, laws, European Union, whatever, we need to start looking in other places for this information. Um, I think most of you here are probably very well aware of media bias and understand it. It's our job and it's, it's important, our role really is to, to spread that to others, to maybe demonstrate to the people we know who might not be as actively aware of this, to show them that you can no longer trust what you read in mainstream print media, what you hear in mainstream broadcast media, that they're all singing from the same hymn sheet and it's not a very holy one. So this, this is something we're going to be fleshing out a little bit more today. Um, in addition to welcoming all of you, for those of you who are not registered members of the party and wish to be, we've got the forums with us today, so later on if you approach me, um, I've got a number of these for anybody who's willing and interested in signing up. It'd be lovely to get your, your name and signature on the line. We've got in excess of the required number already. So... <laughs> We're very happy about that. Um, the first Our Exit meeting was about this time last year, was our huge event that we had in the RDS with 1,500 people in attendance. Um, for the past 12 months, we've been ramping up speed and uh, velocity, and we're not anywhere near full velocity yet, but we're, we're getting there. Um, we've had a fantastic weekend. Um, it feels like the weekend has been about five days long to me. Uh, we had last night a, a really successful giant common launch in Dublin in that we had one meeting where during the course of the meeting at the end when I asked who is interested here in launching a common in the different constituencies in Dublin, at meetings in situations like that you have a lot of hums and haws and maybe four or five people in, in the room might put their hand up. Um, to my absolute delight, when I said that at the end of the evening last night, almost every hand in the place went up. And um, for me, that was the culmination of all our work for the past 12 months. It was just wonderful to see that kind of enthusiasm, people who are now ready to get active and get feet on the ground and really get our commons launched. And when those commons are launched and when they start to develop and grow, all our candidates will emerge from that because that's going to be the people in your area, the people that you know, because we're not going to parachute people in to constituencies. We're going to rely and trust and depend upon our commons to, to produce those candidates for us. So that's wonderful. So I'm really delighted about, about last night. We had an event in Kerry last night. Some of our colleagues were down there, Ben Scallon and a few of the lads, um, and th they had a, an event that went without interruption despite the same kind of threats to disrupt. So the kind of people who make threatening calls, send emails and say things about all of you fascists and racists out there um, seem to not be able to support these claims and not be able to actually come to an event like this and look us in the face and call, call us those names. Um, so the same thing happened with Kerry. They had a perfect evening. Nobody bombarded it. Um, so far today, I don't see anybody charging in here uh, to accuse us of all of those things. So this is great. Um, as I say, lovely to see you all. Uh, there'll probably be a few more people arriving during the course of the meeting. Um, so you know, we'll have a nice exchange, uh, we'll hear what John has to say, um, and then afterwards, anybody that has questions. And I would say about the questions again, that uh, if you have a brief comment to make, or something you want to know about, or something you'd like to be fleshed out, that's great. But I would ask you to consider everybody else in the room. We've all come here to advance our, our, what we're doing, and we've all come here to talk about and to, to flesh out what John's going to talk about but I don't want any mini speeches because if everybody makes a little speech we're going to be here till tomorrow you know we've already paid for the room for today so um, yeah just to say that and again just to remind you 
we got the forms for those of you who are not already registered you can come up to me afterwards so look at without uh, further ado it gives me great pleasure again to welcome a renowned journalist renowned author um, architect of beautiful prose and my certainly current favorite writer because I'm reading his wonderful book gives back the bad roads and I'm not just saying that because you wrote something really nice on your copy for me <laughs> but um, it, it's just a great pleasure to have John here again and uh, he's going to talk to us for a while and then as I say after John is finished if anybody wants to talk about anything he has brought up we'll have a little bit of a Q&A after that so without further ado John Waters ladies and gentlemen thank you Um, thanks, Kate. Good uh, afternoon. Um, there's a f kind of an unwritten l rule of journalism. That you, 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 when you're doing journalism, you do three things. First, you tell people what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them. Then you tell them what you've told them. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Uh, so what I'm going to basically tell you is that, uh, as I've been saying for a long time, we uh, the most fundamental necessity of a democracy is to have a conversation. It's actually more important than all the other elements. You can't have democracy without a conversation. Um, each of us in our own lives, uh, we need, in order to converse with other people, we need to inform ourselves, we need to read, we need to watch, we need to listen, we need to reflect, think, and then we talk. And, and as a result of that, all of that process in the individual, the conversation is likely to be better. And if it works both ways, then it's even better still. With a society, it's actually the other way around. Society can't think as a society unless it has a conversation, a healthy conversation. And that's probably the most fundamental thing that's happened to Ireland in, our life, in my lifetime, that that conversation has been taken away from us the right to conversation and the capacity to have conversation and the mechanisms, uh, uh, the conduits for conversation have been basically confiscated and, and appropriated. And as a result, you know, we, we don't have democracy. And, but yet the conversation tells us, such as it is, tells us we do have democracy, so we don't even know we don't have democracy. And this is the double bind that we're in that we think we're told what normality is. If you listen to radio and, and watch TV and read the newspapers, then you think everything is as it should be, because that's what they're telling you. They don't tell you that there's another way it could be, and that that's the right way for it to be, but they don't want you to have it like that. And that's kind of fundamentally what I want to tell you. We're at the Brexit Freedom to Prosper event in Athlone. John, you give us a very great insight into your career in journalism. Um, yeah, well, I used to be a journalist. Uh, I'm a recovering journalist now, and uh, I'm very doing very well. I don't think I'll ever uh, go back to it again, uh, because I believe that journalism is a deeply corrupt, uh, irredeemable pro profession, both in Ireland and elsewhere, and that the sooner we actually can move into the post-journalism world, the better. Uh, I worked as a journalist for over 30 years in various publications, uh, starting in Hot Press, going through the Sunday Tribune, the Miguel magazine, Ended up in the Irish Times, worked in RT for a while. Um, you know, it was, they were in the beginning innocent times, but then they turned into very, very dark times. And that's the kind of times we're living in now. And we effectively have a society that doesn't have the right to a conversation anymore because uh, our media have appropriated the arena in which that conversation might take place. And so I say to people, it's time to get rid of the existing, what is called the mainstream media, and build a new one, uh, which is actually beginning to happen right now. You also spoke about the change in politics in Ireland. Um, you, you that had uh, travelled quite a, uh, within Europe and, and throughout the world, of course, um, maybe you'd like to indicate how you see that change taking place within Ireland. Well, I think people are basically uh, uh, they're done with uh, civil war politics. They're done with Tweedledum and Tweedledummer, and they want to. Um, I think at last, uh, I think find some form of political realization that is true to themselves. I think that's a very, very uh, minor, at this moment, intuition that people have, that there's a moment approaching when this opportunity will come. But I think it will grow very, very quickly, as it's grown in other countries. In Spain recently, in a matter of months, the Vox party emerged from nowhere and uh, took 
uh, something like 12-13% in the Andrew C in Parliament. So I think that big changes are coming in Ireland as elsewhere in Europe and I think that the old parties have had their day, finally. They've finally shown that they're incapable of ruling, uh, running Ireland in any way commensurate or compatible with the will and the aspirations and the culture of the Irish people. And how do you see um, erected feeling the prosper movement, uh, that making a change within the, the political, political sphere in Ireland? Well, uh, I read it. Uh, I, I was at the uh, opening, uh, the, the launch uh, event, uh, almost exactly a year ago in Dublin, um, and uh, uh, I am delighted to be uh, able to support this movement and indeed any similar movement that is going to help the people of Ireland to see what is uh, true about their history uh, in recent years, recent decades, and about their own situation now after that history. And I think that uh, IREXIT, uh, Freedom to Prosper, is a, is a great party, a great organisation, great people. Uh, there are others. I would like to see more and more of those kinds of movements coming forward. And then I would like to see an umbrella programme, pl platform, maybe a national platform, which will bring all these together and present the Irish people with real options for the first time. Not just to have an alternative opposition or a few independents, but an actual alternative government for the future uh, coming years of this country's life. Yeah, a very successful event in that long today. Yeah, yeah. We're very, very pleased uh, how things went today. Very enthusiastic crowd. Uh, we're absolutely delighted to have John Waters speak again. Um, and, you know, he talked about the direction media has gone in um, and how we perhaps need to look in other directions for our information now and how media has developed over the years um, and perhaps not as reliable. Uh, so that was sort of the core of our meeting today and we got, we got a lot of uh, enthusiastic responses from the room on that. People have you know, had the same observations themselves. It was lovely to hear it articulated so well by John. Um, so yeah, really excited about the interest. Uh, we've got a lot of new sign-ups today and a number of people who also want to start Cummins in their local areas, which is exactly why we're having these get-togethers, so that people can activate um, and actually get feet on the ground. So we've got a lot of new common leaders um, evolved from today's meeting and anybody that's watching that's interested in being involved, uh, you'll see the uh, URL uh, for our website, you can just log on and have a look, it'll be in the messages underneath um, and we'd love to hear from you and you can contact us. And media and of course politics is changing rapidly now worldwide, do you feel you're well placed to um, to meet with people who, who want to join and take part in, in politics at, at, your, at the new level in Ireland? Absolutely. Uh, we, we have an overwhelming level of interest. Uh, the enthusiasm that's out there is, is it's so gratifying to hear it. Um, you know, this is finally, there's, there's a huge, there's a massive sea change coming and the timing couldn't be better. We're just so happy that this is happening and evolving this way for us right now. We're, we're very happy about it and we are well placed, absolutely, at this moment in time. So do you find that you have more people coming from what was called the mainstream media to join with you um, to, to help your, your party progress? Well, we find that, you know, we, we don't even have to make the argument anymore that we have people coming to us and saying, you know, we don't know where to get information because we can't trust what we're reading and hearing in the mainstream media. So we, we direct them to our website, to to citizen journalists who have some, some great YouTube channels um, and, and just ordinary people. I mean, we are comprised of ordinary people. We're, we're comprised of taxpayers. We are approached constantly by people who are so so disillusioned and so disappointed in the, the way things are going that are affecting their everyday life, every aspect of life. So we, we're talking about homelessness, we're talking about health, we're talking about education, all of those things. These, these are the things we're hearing constantly from, from all the people that are expressing an interest in becoming involved with our Irish Freedom Party. And if you had one last thing to say to the viewers, what would that be? I would say don't be despondent, don't be afraid. Uh, the, the biggest observation that we all have is that people feel almost the need to be given permission to speak what's in their hearts and you know you, you can do that. Don't be afraid. There are so many of us out there. Uh, it, it's only when you start engaging with other people that you discover how like-minded the majority of people who are working and striving in this country and who are thinking the same things that you are thinking and feeling the same things you're feeling and don't be afraid, get out there, say it, do it. That's all I can say.